Goldwater conservative and former White House counsel John Dean played a prominent role in the impeachment of Richard Nixon. The last of Mr. Dean's trilogy on Republican governance is titled Broken Government, How Republican Rule Destroyed the Legislative, Executive and Judicial Branches. His most pressing concern is with the current and future state of the Supreme Court. What I decided to do was give enough history of what had happened to the court, how the Republicans, going back to Nixon, politicize the non-political branch and the impact that's had as they have in, sort of refined their cookie cutter as to who they will put and how they will put on them. Which really affects people. Oh, this is the branch people know the least about. It affects their life the most, without a question. The, you can accomplish through the court what you cannot get through the political process. Uh, but the other side of that, of course, is uh, that the, the, the progressives and the liberals were able to get civil rights legislation, uh, that they, excuse me, civil rights rights that they couldn't get through the legislative body through the courts. So uh, you've got to understand that there, there's, there are two sides to this coin in that sense, but not where the court is headed today. And that's this issue of fundamentalism. Now, what is a fundamentalist jurist? Um, this is a term as a part of a, a way academics, and I try to boil it down and be very non-academic about it, uh, explain the different schools of thought of, of constitutional law. A fundamentalist is one who looks to the original meaning of the Constitution and says, well, what was written in, 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 at our founding uh, is good enough for today, uh, that these basic rules. Well, of course, was very little was written in that Constitution. Uh, there are not, there are not explanations for how to, it's not, it's a bare outline, if you will. It is, it, it is premises. But the fundamentalist says, will say, well, it's not in the Constitution, so obviously the founders didn't want us to do this or go there. They're the dead Constitution school. Um, what they will do, let me just give you one very striking example of the implications of a fundamentalist court. And today, <clears throat> as, as both I view it and people who are friends who have very active practices in front of the Supreme Court see it. Uh, that we have clearly four fundamentalists already. We have Scalia, who is the lead and the, the, the prototypical, if you will, Clarence Thomas, uh, another fundamentalist, uh, and both uh, Alito and Roberts. Uh, while they come in a softer shade, they're reaching the exact same conclusions, and they're just a little shrewder, a little less blunt at this point. They need one, we need one more vote, five control the court, and what will you have these people saying? things like the Bill of Rights don't apply to the states. What's that mean? Well, that means that a state like Utah might decide to have uh, the Mormon religion as their state religion. Uh, it would mean the removal of uh, the right to protection against self-incrimination at the state level. Could mean the... Uh, um, women have no rights. Women have no, women have no rights at all in the, in the fundamentalist thinking. In fact, uh, if you recall the Bork uh, confirmation hearings, he changed his mind. He had a, a, a confirmation conversion uh, when he decided, well, maybe the equal rights provisions of the Constitution do apply to women after all, because he wasn't ready to write off over half the country to try to get on the court.